Hello, everybody. This is Mr. Foley and Whitney Houston, and welcome to Podcast 8.3, which is due to 2 of 12. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to define and explain the importance of a limiting reactant, sometimes called a limiting reagent. You have a reactant to the thing on the left of the arrow, reactants make products. Define percent yield and explain why chemical reactions do not have 100% yield. Oh, no. Calculate percent yield. Yay. Another calculator part. Isn't that wonderful? Um, solve stoichiometry problems involving heat. Ooh, we got to find out how much heat is actually released. So let's hop right to that. Mm -hmm. Definition. A limiting reactant. Bam. Controls the amount of product form. If I have six slices of bread, how many bologna sandwiches, double bologna is best, can I make? Now you're going to say, you can make three sandwiches, and I'll be Mr. Funny Teacher. And say, uh-uh, six slices of bread can't make any sandwiches. You make zero sandwich because you don't have any bologna. Ha, 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 Okay. Now what if I have 500 pieces of bologna? Uh, um, I misspelled bologna. That's sad. And I have a song. My bologna has a first name. It's not Bolgona. I'm so sad. But um, what a limiting rack does, it controls the amount of product. So six slices of bread can make three sandwiches. And if I have 500 pieces of bologna, and let's assume one piece of bologna, one piece per, 500 um, slices of bologna can make 500 sandwiches. So how much can we really make? We can really make three because we don't have enough bread to make 500. Oh, that's sad. Okay. So maybe, I don't know, if you worked at a bakery and lied on your application, and then maybe you could actually get that. Oh, did I say that out loud? Ooh. Sorry, boys. All right. What is the limiting reagent or reactant? Before the reaction started, hopefully you're better at this color stuff than I am, um, there are supposed to be two different color things, but there's big ones and little ones. So. Um, what I'm making is big ring, little ring. So let's count our big rings. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six big rings. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's twelve of these. Now I need one of each, right? One of these guys and one of these guys. This one can make six. This guy can make 12. Well, how much is actually made? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I feel like the count today. Oh, 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 oh. And I have this my excess reagent, meaning I have some left over. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six excess reagents. Oh, 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 oh. So my limiting reagent is one that controls how much. So if I add more of this, if I change this to eight, I will get more product. Right? If I add more of these guys, I get nothing extra. Right? So that's pretty good. Percent yield is still part of a total. Times 100%. Part is what you got in the lab. Total is what you what stoic says you should have. Now, what's stoichiometry? That's when you have blah, time dividing bar, time dividing bar, time dividing bar, and somewhere or another you have moles. Moles and moles. Okay? So that's stoichiometry, the math fun that we've been having over and over and over again. So let me show you a sample of this. Calculate the percent yield if 85 grams of methane react with excess oxygen to make 93.2 grams of carbon dioxide. So I have 93.2 grams of this, I have 85 grams of this, and notice we're converting one into the other. I'm going to see how much we're going to get. 85 grams of CH4, and I'm going to convert it into grams of CO2. And isn't that weird? I already have a number of it. Why am I going to convert into it? Let's see if I get all of that. Sure. 85 grams of CH4. So I'm going to cancel grams of CH4. Hey, I think I've done this before. One mole of CH4. Little g stands for grams, and little g stands for go to the that table, which is 16.05 times dividing by. Go away, mole of CH4. And that cancels into it. Now remember, I'm going into grams of CO2, but I can't go right into grams of CO2. The only way I can change into another substance from CH4 to CO2 is to go through moles of moles of CO2. Moles of moles use coefficients. Ooh, oh, it's a one and a one. What a winner. Then I cancel my moles. Now I want to get rid of moles of CO2. 
I'm going to grams of CO2. One mole is go to the periodic table. 12 carbon, 32 oxygen, 44.01. And let's ask our calculator what we should have gotten. 85 divided by 16.05 times 1 divided by 1 times 44.01. Oh, oh, and I have 233 grams of CO2 is what I should have gotten. But I got 93.2. That's so sad. Now, it seems so sad. Okay. Now, if I undo the percent, equals part over total. And we think, you know, you have a percent yield, that's about like a good grade, like a 90% or an 80% or 70%. And on this one, what I'm going to do is I might, what I actually have in lab is 93.2 over 233. I'm go to 233.1 times 100%. So 93.2 divided by second answer gives me times 100, 39.98%, which is just about 40.0%. Believe it or not, this is life sometimes, boys and girls. Sometimes you only get a 40% yield. So think about it. I mean, you could be the um, wonderful person. I have a bright and bubbly personality. And I do mixed martial arts fighting. And I'm a chemistry teacher. And if I wanted to ask, I don't know, 100 girls, if they would be my friend, well, it's 40 of them, say yes. Well, are you happy you have 40? Yeah, probably. And are you sad you don't have 60? Well, you've got 40, so you focus on it. So percent yields do range sometimes between 20 to 90%. Better than 90% is really, really hard to get. Okay. So calculate the percent yield. My percent yield is 40% or 39.9. Either one is fine. Here's another one. 1.85 grams of aluminum reacts with uh, reacts with oh, reacts and 2.12 grams of copper form. What is percent yield? So what I'm going to do is convert this into this. Okay, 1.85 grams of aluminum. I'm going to convert into the same unit. Notice I have 2.12 grams, so I'm going to convert it into grams. Times dividing by. I don't like you grams. I'm going to cancel you. Always go through moles. Always go through moles. Always go through moles. Always go through moles. Where did this number come from? Hey, I know that. That's from the periodic table. Little g stands for go to the periodic table. I think I picked bad problems because my coefficients. Oh, let's see. I didn't balance it. Moles over moles. So I need to balance this guy. So moles over moles is coefficients, but there aren't any. I need to balance it right now. This side I have one aluminum. This side I have two aluminums. Bam. This side I have one copper. This side I have one copper. That's OK. This side I have one sulfate. This side I have three sulfates. Three sulfates means, oh, three coppers. Oh, there we go. We balanced it. So whenever you have moles over moles, let's make sure your equation's balanced. So moles of copper, three. Moles of aluminum, two. Times about by moving right along. Um, then I want to get out of moles of copper. So I put moles of copper on the bottom. By the way, grams of aluminum cancel. Moles of aluminum cancel. Moles of copper are going to cancel. And I'm going to go into grams of copper. One mole of copper is 63. something other. What is it? 63.5,000 per table. So let's see what we get. 1.85 divided by 26.98 times 3 divided by 2 times 63.35. 6.5. Four grams of copper. Okay, this is how much I should get. Remember, you do a whole lot of work. This is how much I should get. How much did I get? Two point twelve. So I'm out of percent. It's part over total times one hundred percent. My part that I have will usually be given to you, or you'll read it from the balance. Two point twelve over six point five four times a hundo. 2.12 divided by a second answer gives me times 100, 32.4%. Oh, that's kind of sad. But you know what? That's kind of life. Okay? You get a percent. Your percent will always range from 0 to 100. In theory, you get more than 100% yield, but then you know that you made a boo-boo. Why don't we get 100% yield? Okay? We shouldn't get 100% yield. This is expected. This is normal. 
You know, there are people, I don't know, say Brad Pitt is the most wonderful dude in the world. If he asked 100 girls out, somebody's going to say no. Why? I don't know. You can figure out girls. So in order to, why we don't get 100% yield here is particles need to collide to react. So when they react, they have to bump into each other. And that may not happen to everyone. So if I've got a reaction, I've got X has to react with Y, and they're in, I don't know, a solution or something like that. It's possible that these guys just never find each other. Oh, how sad. X and Y never find each other. Oh. And if they never bump into each other, they can never react. So it's possible that those particles never react. Remember how small particles are? That's why we have 10 to the 23rd of them in a mole. So they're so small, they might never bump into each other just right. Okay. Some reactants and products have transfer issues. So if I'm a particle right here in this glass thing, and I'm supposed to react with something in a beaker over here, what if I'm stuck in that beaker? So for example, if I have a glass of Kool-Aid, mmm, Kool-Aid, and I pour it out, ooh, pouring glass thing is hard, there's not always a drop or two left. And that drop or two left, oh, I've got to put my gaping maw in here. Okay, isn't there always a drop or two left in the glass? It's like, oh, I can't get the last one out. So sometimes when they move things from one container to another, we lose them, and then they never are able to react. Oh, so sad. Another thing could happen is a side reaction could take place. So what happens is if my reaction is A plus B yields C, what could happen is you could have, like, oxygen in the air, and oxygen just loves A and takes it and seals it away, ah, and kidnaps it, okay? And then it's like a really bad movie, like Taken. And it's gone, and you have, what's his name, chase after him to try and find it. Okay? So side reactions take place. So if somebody abducts poor A, they're never going to be able to react with B, and then it'll never be right again. New topic. Hey, hmm. In combustion reactions, the products are more than CO2 and H2O. There are other reactions, too, that do this. Light and heat are also products. Heat can be given a coefficient. Ooh, remember coefficients are the numbers in front and the balance equation. Let's look at a few. OK, oh, I thought I had two. I guess I only had one. So 2ClO3 yields 2KCl plus 3O2. Now, if this says plus 195.3 kilojoules, then what I could do with this, because it's positive, that means it's a reactant, I can put 195.3 kilojoules right here in the reaction. OK? How much heat is required to use 58.6 grams of potassium chloride? So what I'm going to do is just convert this in grams into that in kilojoules, my heat unit. OK? So let's try that. 58.6 grams of KClO3 times dividing by grams KClO3. I always go through moles, one mole KClO3. Okay, what does G stand for grams? What does G stand for? Go to the periodic table. Potassium is 39.1 plus 35.45. That chlorine plus four oxygens at 48 in 122.55. 122.55 times the adding bar. Moles KClO3. Moles of, wait, oh my goodness. This, I could do moles, but I'm not going to do moles of it. This one is a little bit different because I don't have to go through moles of it because it's not a particle. I'm going to go right into kilojoules. It's just like a mole. We're still going to use our mole ratio. So moles over kilojoules use mole ratios. 2 and 195.3. And I'm done. OK? Moles over kilojoules equal coefficients. Right? Use your coefficients. Two out of coefficients. Same thing is true for kilojoules over mole. OK? So wow, that's kind of short. 58.6 divided by 1.2.55 times 195.3 divided by dose. 46.7. Oh, what? You're going to I'm still here? I'm going to say it's kilojoules. How happy. Okay. I'm going to make 9.87 liters of this. 9.87 liters of this. How much heat do I take? Pretty much the same deal. 9.87 liters of O2 times dividing by. Don't like you liters of O2. I want to go through moles of O2. Liters of 22.4. So again, liters cancel. 
moles of O2 always go through moles unless you're going right into heat. So it's not, you're never going to have moles of kilojoules, so it's just going to go to kilojoules. My coefficient for moles is 3. My coefficient for kilojoules is the weird coefficient of 195.3. Yep, calculator time, 9.87 divided by 22.4 times 195.3 divided by 3. Enter 28.7 kilojoules. Why kilojoules? Notice my liters canceled, my moles canceled. Kilojoules are all that are left. And isn't that enough for all of us? Review. Percent is part of a total. So we almost had it all. Like Whitney says. But we will never actually have it all. And we know why. We will never, ever, ever have it all. Remember the total is from steak. Treat heat like a reactant in our product. And always go through moles. How nice. So I'll let you almost have it all. And I will definitely be out of here. Do this.